it's holiday time. Bah! The holiday season is just around the corner. So D&D players, send this video to your loved ones so that they get you stuff that you actually want. <laughs> I'm not sponsored by any of these products. However, I will be dropping links down in the description for you. Some of those might be affiliate links, particularly from Amazon, meaning if you click on it and you buy it, then I get a small commission at no cost to you, and it's like pennies, to be honest. <laughs> For the Dice Goblin, there are so many different kinds of dice out there, from handmade to manufactured. This makes prices range from anywhere to under $10 to like $200. You can find some really cool handmade dice, again, on the more expensive side, on Etsy, but you can also find just some like giant dice and other things on Amazon. But either way, if they're a Dice Goblin, dice is never a bad idea. The other thing that a dice goblin definitely needs is a really cool bag and this is on my list and I put it in my DM video as well. This one can hold tons of dice and it has individual pockets so you can put all your d20s together or a certain set together. Here's another thing a dice goblin definitely needs a dice jail. You can get these on Amazon. You can also get these from handmade sellers on Etsy. And of course, a dice tray. But these can vary in price and size. If you get something that's made of fabric and pops together, that's going to be cheaper than a wooden dice tray. So this is all dependent on what your price range is. I linked one that I found on Amazon for $45 because it was also pretty cool. It had a dice tower on there as well. For the player who notebook is just a mess so this was gonna be a self promo as a DM I love seeing my players take notes and really engage with what I'm putting out there for them so I designed a notebook for just that purpose I have notebooks in two styles I have an art deco one and a classic version which includes everything from your character sheet to your spell tracking your NPCs, your locations, your section notes, of course, and even dungeon maps. The original two styles are great for any class if you don't know what class they're playing. I would go with one of these. Otherwise, I also have class-based versions like this druid one, which comes with individual trackers that are designed for your character. So for a druid, there is a wild shape tracker on the character sheet, but also is super tailored to that class. So for instance, for druids, I included all the spells that are listed in the SRD right in here so that you don't have to flip through the book. Gifts for the in-person table. You might want to consider getting your players a Hero Forge gift card. Hero Forge can be on the more expensive side depending on how many customizations, whether you paint your mini, etc. But the thing is, these miniatures are super customized. You'll probably not find another one exactly like yours. Minis tend to cost around $60, at least every time I design one in there. <laughs> Next is a TND travel mug. I like this one because it has a dragon on it that you can literally get any kind. There are just tons that are even more specific than just this dragon one. But honestly, if you got me a mug, my hubby would probably kill you because we have way too many and that is <laughs> the aftermath of being a barista for several years. This one was pretty cool. I found it on Etsy. It is a spell scroll, no, a scroll spell tracker. It's about $30 plus, depending on whether you get it hand painted, what you paint it as, etc. But it looks cool and is useful. It actually tracks your spell slots. So, a D&D tote bag. I actually sell some for 26 bucks, and I sell some backpacks for a little bit more, like 50 something. I can't remember right now. But if you're not into tote bags or you think they want even more space, there are some other cool bags on Amazon, which I'll also link down below. This one has the option of looking like dragon scales even, which is pretty cool, but more expensive at the $150 mark as opposed to $99. This includes literally everything, a space for dice, for minis, for books, for pens, whatever you want, it can be put in this bag. So I think it's pretty cool. You might also want to consider buying your spellcasters some spell cards. They have some more generic packs like the arcane spells, and then they have class specific ones. These can range from anywhere between 15 to like $30, depending on which packs you get. 
gifts for the virtual player. You can gift them a sub to a virtual tabletop like Roll20, which is definitely... Rollo. You might consider gifting a virtual player a subscription <laughs> subscription to Roll20 or, or uh, any other virtual tabletop that they use. Or you could also consider gifting them a subscription to D&D Beyond, which allows them to make unlimited characters. So this is particularly useful for people who are in multiple campaigns. For the newbie just getting started, you can obviously get them the player's handbook. This is pretty much key to starting any adventure and making any character. It often also goes on sale during the holidays. You could also consider the starter kit, which is something that can get a whole group you're making the wood not look like wood. They're gonna know it's fake. The starter kit is great for getting a whole group of newbies together and it only costs $40. It includes everything from dice, character sheets, uh, a truncated set of rules, monsters, maps, and it's a pretty cool adventure. For the player that needs a little help role playing, consider getting this book called The Ultimate RPG Character Backstory Guide. This book contains a whole bunch of different backstory plots to help your players really develop a character that has something interesting about them. And on the plus side, it's also pretty cheap at roughly like $11, so it's a good stocking stuffer. For the player that has it all. So this person's been playing for forever and you have no idea what to get them. That's okay, there's still plenty of good gift ideas for them. For instance, you could buy a bunch of different games. I recently bought a game called D&D Dungeon Mayhem. It's super easy to play, takes about 30 minutes and super easy to learn. There are other board games in the RPG type genre like Betrayal on House on the Hill. This one is a lot of fun. Essentially, you're exploring a house, you find a bunch of different items, and every time you find stuff, you roll for a haunt. And that haunt can be different every single time. For instance, one time our house turned into a bird and decided to fly away, and our goal was to escape before it flew out. Uh, another time I was turned into an alien and I had to devour all my friends before they escaped. So you know, anything goes. It's also made by Wizards of the Coast and they have a spin-off version which is called Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. For any of you non-D&D players, Baldur's Gate is a big city well known in the Forgotten Realms. Uh, so it takes that D&D-esque vibe and escalates it further. Another cool board game that's on the expensive side is Gloomhaven. Expensive at about $160. This game, I can tell you though, is a great tabletop experience. We've honestly been playing it for two or three years on and off. Probably haven't made it through half of the game. It's definitely worth the money. It's a card-based game where all the players are working cooperatively to get through certain scenarios and what you do and decide in those scenarios affects the world around you. You also unlock new characters and get new abilities throughout the whole thing and it's generally just a lot of fun. It is a game that takes a little bit of commitment, but I mean, if they're already committing to D&D, they're used to commitment. <laughs> Finally, you can always resort to home decor, <laughs> like this color-changing dice lamp, which is pretty cool, and only about $45, or something like this break glass in case of dragons <laughs> little piece that I found on Etsy for about $30. There are tons of things out there from posters to art pieces and even I saw, but I can't find the link for now of course, a dragon that looked like it was spewing fog out of its mouth which is pretty cool. There are plenty of more ideas out there and if you have some that I haven't mentioned, drop them down in the comments below so that we can share and add them to our wish, wish list. I also have a video over here that you can watch about gifts for your DM which are 80% from my own wish list. So there's that. 